Hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and in this video here, we are going to be revisiting our old friend here, the Xbox 360, and we're going to be taking a look at another emulator here. Now, I had previously done a video covering the original PlayStation emulator on here, and while as it has its shortcomings, it is in short a cool look at what is available on the Xbox 360 and what you could use, you know, some of your extra storage space for if you want to try out some PS1 games, but this is not going to be with the PS1. This is actually going to be with the Super Famicom or better known as the Super Nintendo. I guess that can be a little bit debated. But either way, this is going to be showing you how we can download, set up, and run a Super Nintendo emulator on the Xbox 360 to get some extra usage out of it. I will say too, not only I do have some personal experience with this, because I have played several games through this emulator and it's been pretty solid, at least from my usage on there. However, as a extra bit of trivia here, the emulator that we're actually going to be using has been developed and released by Modern Vintage Gamer. Now, because it was released so long ago, Ago. This is something he shared in the last several years, however, it has been released anonymously at least when it was released years ago. But either way, it is cool to see that this emulator is still working, usable, and actually a pretty good one. I will say this one is better than the original PlayStation emulator experience, so if you were a little put off by that, you might want to try this one out on your 360. Now if you're going to be following along with this here, you are going to need a few things. First of all, you are going to need a modified Xbox 360, specifically that has been capable of running homebrew. That means you're going to need a hard modded system such as a JTAG or a RGH. I'm going to be using an RGH for this system here, or you'll need to use a retail system that has been enabled for homebrew using bad update. But if you're just wanting to use this on a purely flashed or completely retail system without running any type of exploit to get into homebrew, that's not going to be possible. You need bad update, RGH, or something similar on that. We're also going to be using a USB drive and a computer in order to download the emulator, transfer it over, and transfer our games. Now, I will say, if your system is connected to the internet, I have covered this before, you can go into scripts, you can check out the homebrew store if you have not gone in here, and you could download the emulator through here, because we are going to be getting SNES 360. It could save you a few steps, however, what I'm going to be doing is also getting getting my games and copying them to the USB drive from the computer. So this is only the emulator here, but I'll show you how to set up everything. However, with all of that covered here, let's go ahead exit out of this, and we're now going to go over to our computer with a USB drive, and I'll show you what you need to get started. Now I will preface this by saying that I'm not going to be showing how to get games, you are going to need to get that on your own, back them up from a cartridge, do whatever you need to do. This is not going to be covering that, but for the emulator setup on here and the downloads, we really just need one download thankfully which is the emulator itself so i'm going to have the emulators page for console mods linked down below in the description this is specifically for xbox 360 emulators and you can see on the list of emulators right here there's many that you can choose to download check out mess around with but the one we're going to be looking for is going to be snes 360 or snes 360. now it does have a well-deserved warning here stating that it contains homebrew achievements that can get your live account banned i'm going to touch up on this one more time in the video, but that is a valid warning, so keep that in mind. What you'll need to do is come over here, just click on the SNES 360 link, and then save that 7-zip file somewhere you can easily find it. Now keep in mind this is a 7-zip archive, so if you don't have a way of extracting this, you are going to need to download and install 7-zip on here. Not too bad, it's easy, free to use, and it works pretty well. But this is going to be needed in case you do not have a method of extracting this. Now once it's downloaded, you should just have one archive file, which is going to be the SNES 360 Beta V0. .32. This is the latest one, and what you can do is right-click this and use something such as, well, 7-zip to extract it into its own directory. Once it's been extracted, you can go ahead and open up the folder right here, and it's pretty simplistic. You have your media, which is going to be used for everything here. This is the ROMs directory, which it's not hard to guess what will go in there. You got a README, your settings, as well as the executable itself. Now, if you want to check out the README, I definitely recommend giving this a once-over. This here shows some of the features, what was new for this 
this release here, uh, some of the extra usage for the settings.xml, as well as some extra settings right here and customizations if you want to do things such as replace the background music and do anything else on this here. It looked like there was also some to-do lists on here, such as adding favorites, IPS patches, and cheats, but unfortunately, like I said, unfortunately, since this is the most recent version, those features will not be on here. But just keep this in mind, this is what is available right here, and it seems to work pretty well. Once you're done reading that, we can go ahead and close out of here, and now we need to get our games added on here. So I have a separate folder here with several games that I've decided to add on here, and really all you need to do is grab your games themselves. Mine are SMC files, but as long as they are a Super Famicom or Super Nintendo ROM file, they should be fine. You can grab all these, let's go ahead, right click, copy them out, and go into the ROMs folder, right click, paste, and that's all you need to do. So there we go, our games have been added. Now I do want to give a bit of a heads up on here. If you're going to copy, let's say, a large collection of Super Nintendo games with the emulator to your 360, that's totally fine, but do keep in mind, you might see here with my file names that I've tried to keep them pretty simplistic. So what I would recommend, if you're having some trouble copying over a few games, it's typically due to the file names themselves. So what I would encourage is go into your ROM files, give them a little more simplicity names, essentially just keep special characters out, like Zombies Ate My Neighbors, for example. You're probably not going to want an at or a, a cash sign or a number. It's just best to eliminate those if you can. On top of that, it's also optimal to keep your file names at least somewhat short here. I'd say my link to the past one here, that's even pushing it a little bit. So just keep that in mind for later. If you decide to transfer these files over and you have some trouble with a few problematic games, it's probably due to the file length or some of the characters in the file name or even both. Now that that's all been covered, we can close out of here. I'm personally going to choose to rename this folder. I'm just going to rename it to SNES360, just like that. And now we just need to transfer it over to the console itself. I do have a USB drive plugged in, and like any other Xbox 360 USB drive, you're going to need to make sure the file system is FAT32, and of course it is MBR, not GPT. I'm not going to be covering that on here, because if you use a 360 for any amount of time, you should be able to get a compatible flash drive working on there. But we can just go in here, and I'm just going to copy this to the root of the USB drive. You can copy it anywhere else, like for example if you want to make an emulators folder you can, but I'm just copying it here to the root. Now once that's all done, we can right click, eject, and take this over to the console. Now that we're back over at the system, go ahead and plug in your USB drive if you have them on here, but before I show you this emulator, I'm going to give you one final but big warning. You see, this emulator does have achievement support, and while that's really awesome in a piece of homebrew, unfortunately, you can add these achievements to your account when you first load up this piece of homebrew, there's going to be an achievement that pops up, and because of that, that is a ban-worthy offense, or it could get your gamertag reset, or any other issues on there. I bring this up because even current day in 2025, that is enough to trigger a ban on your account. So what I'm saying here is if you're going to be using SNES 360, do not run this on a Xbox Live enabled profile. I'm actually going to sign out of here and I'll show you all. For example, you can go to your sign in settings and you can see here that I have two profiles. One of them is a Xbox Live enabled profile and the other one does not show that, so it is an offline profile. You're going to only want to play SNES 360 on your offline profile. I know there might be some people that will say something different, but I have seen this happen before. Even in 2025, I've seen people get banned for modded achievements and such. So that is my final warning on there. Take it as you may, but my recommendation is going to be just use a offline profile. I'm actually going to create a new profile here just so you all can see that achievement, but I'll go ahead. Yeah, I'll pop this on the USB drive. Why not? Player one is fine. And let's go ahead and get set up on here. There we go. Yep, all that default stuff. You don't have to do this step. I'm just doing this for the achievement. <laughs> so anyways, what you need to do is once you're set up, you're signed into that offline profile, you can bring up your guide, go to the file browser or whichever option you're going to use for this, go over to your USB drive, SNES360, find SNES360.executable and say yes. And wait a bit. It is going to boot to a black screen here. It might take some time, but you should see here, as you can see, we did get the achievement, which is Unlocked Homebrew. And you will have an option over where you want to save your settings to. You can save them to the hard drive or the USB drive. I'm personally just going to save them to the hard drive here. 
but there we go. Now I did mention the achievements, so if you want to see some of them here, you can go to the achievements option, and you can see that was one of them, but the rest of them are secrets here. So if you want to explore those, you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, there are some pretty cool achievements that you can unlock on this. However, we do have that, and if you want to toggle the background music, you can hit the RB button to either turn it on or off. Now, in order to actually play a game, you can go over to the games option right here, and you should be able to see that there are several games you have loaded up on here. Just to pick one to load, for example, I'm going to pick Zombies Ate My Neighbors. So in order to do this, find your ROM, tap the A button on here, give it a few moments. Now you should see here that it shouldn't take too long to boot up your game. And as you can see, it was able to load it up pretty quickly right here. Now I will say most people are going to be maybe a little bit annoyed or horrified over at the aspect ratio right here, but there is a way that you can fix that. So I'll go ahead and show you using the in-game menu. We can go ahead and get this loaded up here so it's not looking too gnarly. There we go. So once we get to this point, let me actually hit start so we can get to a better screen here. You can press the right stick and left stick in at the same time, and it will pause your game and bring this up here where you have several different options. You can see here there's point filtering, mute audio, and one of the things that you could do is keep aspect ratio. So if you tap the A button and then press the B button, it will bring you back here and you can see here that's going to look a, a decent amount better. At least it will look right here. Now if we go back into this menu, you can also tweak a few other things, like if you want to change how this looks, or if you want to enable scan lines, you can do so. So just like that, you should be able to see some scan lines on there. Now I'm personally going to keep this clean. Okay, it's loading in the attract mode here. I'm going to keep this clean with simple 2x, come back out here, but you can see that it is at least running. Now you should see there's a few other options here. If you tap left or right, you'll have options to make a save state, to load a save state, reset the game. You could even take a preview image as well too, and of course you can exit the game itself. So I'll actually do one of those options here. Uh, let's just get back to this part here, for example, because I do like how that looks. I'll hit take preview, preview saved, that's okay, and we can go ahead, move on. So we can go ahead, hit start, and I'm just going to be playing alone on this. But you can see that it is working so far, so this is great. Let me actually go ahead and finish up this level here. Now, if you've never played this game here, I definitely recommend giving it a shot. It is one of my retro favorites, but uh, let's go ahead and finish up this level here. And there we go, we got the exit, so let's run through it. And there we go, we were able to get the bonus as well too, so perfect. Now at this point, it's going to load up level 2, but the nice thing is, since this is an emulator, we can go ahead and create a save state. So for this, I'm going to bring up the menu, go ahead and use the save state so I don't have to rely on the password system here, and from here we can exit our game. From here, if there's any other games you want to play, you can go ahead, select them, play them, load them up, and you can even see that preview image I made is showing up for Zombies Ate My Neighbors, so if you want to customize it a little further, you're able to do that. But I'm going to go ahead for the next steps here, here, just go ahead exit out of SNES 360 and get back to Aurora. Now back over at the custom dashboard we have, what if you're wanting to transfer this over to your internal drive or even add it to Aurora itself? I'll go ahead and show you both options in that order. First to transfer it to an internal drive, you can press the back button, go to the file manager, and within here go down to your USB drive, find your SNES 360, and I would also recommend renaming this here. This isn't going to impact any of the usage on this, but you can come over to your executable, navigate over here, go to the rename option, and instead of SNES360, I'm going to change this to default. So once it's default.xex, you can press the start button, and now that that's prepared, we can go ahead and highlight this, you can come over to the left, either cut it or copy it. I'm going to choose to copy this out. Now tap the RB button on your controller, you can go to hard drive one and stick this where you're wanting to save it. Now it does make a MU's folder here. I prefer to put it in the emulators directory. So I'm going to go to my emulators directory that I created before, navigate to the left, go down to the paste option, say yes, and transfer it over. Now, if you get something like this, this has happened to me with SNES games before. So if I tap the okay button, I'll go here, I'll go to ROMs, let's see, actually, you know what? This is a good example right here. You could see that my link to the past was not copied over. And that is because if we look at it in the USB drive, 
Link to the Past is a longer title name. Now this is one of those examples where the file name is too long, so unfortunately it's not going to be copied over, and even if you try to rename it within Aurora, it acts a little odd. Like for example, if I try to rename Frogger, that comes up with no issue. But if I try to rename this one here, it doesn't bring up anything. So let's just go ahead and quickly rename it as long as that works. Let's see, it was able to rename this. So if I try to do a file copy of this, let's go ahead, drop it in here. You can see, yep, now it was able to successfully copy over. So that's actually a real example that I was able to show you all. So just in case you run into that, just keep your file names in mind. Now with that done, I'm going to close out of here completely. I'm going to remove the USB drive, but one of our last things that we can do is go ahead and get this added to Aurora itself. If you have not done this before, you can press the start button, go to content, go to manage paths, and down here, you are going to need to add a path. Now I've already added in my emulators path, so you can go in here to add, change, find wherever you've saved that to, whether it's on your USB drive or your internal drive. So mine would be the emulators folder I created. You tap the Y button on here. You're going to want to set the depth to two, and you can change the script data. Now I've already set that up here, but since I've added something in and I don't have auto scan, I'm going to tap scan now. Now do keep in mind, it's going to do your scan, but in order to populate everything on here properly, like the cover art and such, you are going to need to be connected to a network. Now mine was already connected, but you could see here if I tap the Y button, check this out, I do have this available. If you want to change the cover art, you're more than welcome to do so by coming down here, tapping all the way over to the left, tap the A button, and you can check out some of the other custom art that's here. I personally like the default one, so I'll be sticking with that. Either way, that is about it for this video here. Now, like I said before, if you're using an emulator such as like the original PlayStation one, yeah, it's not really going to be the best, but it is cool that you can use this on the 360. But the Super Nintendo emulator, I've been pretty happy with the results. This was years and years ago. I was actually playing several Super Nintendo games through this emulator with little to no issues that I had at least. Is it going to be the most accurate thing? Probably not, but is it enjoyable? Does it work? Yes, to both of those answers. Either way, that is about it for this video here. If this video helped out, if you enjoyed it, if you learned something, if you were able to get some of your favorite Super Nintendo games on your system, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too. But as I always say, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone.